ladies and gentlemen, live from Studio A at Argentum Studios in North Hollywood, California, you're watching Talk Talk with Billy G. Hey now, what's up everybody? Talk Talk with Philly G family. This is Talk Talk with Philly G and I'm Philly G. And today we are so lucky and so proud to have Terry Garber here. How Thank are you? you? Welcome. I'm great. Thanks Yes, let's much. get her on camera because no one wants to see me. We just want to see <laughs> beauty. Right? You're thank so you sweet and charming. No, no, I'm not. But thank you for coming. Sure, it's my pleasure. Absolutely. Yes. And let me thank Cheryl. Cheryl Jackson. Cheryl Jackson. From Jackson Entertainment. They are a management company, not an agency. Correct. Yes. And you got that right. Oh, for sure. And thank you very much, Cheryl. We'll see her hopefully soon. She'll be coming by. Um, wow. <laughs> you look great. Thank you. I, I feel keep good. Saying, but you look really, really vibrant i feel good i yeah. feel really good you gotta really share healthy. your secret do you have a secret i have no secrets <laughs> i'm an I'm open sure book i will reveal all <laughs> right <laughs> yeah. i'm sure there's not a lot to reveal i'm you you look great i'm sure you're living a great life you are out of new york right now yes i live in new york that's got to be great it's it's great i love in manhattan it. Uh, manhattan where? wow yeah you're really doing it I've lived there on and off for 20 something years. Yes. So it's it's great. I love the subway system. I don't have to drive. Yes. I don't drive. Right. So it's great. And you're living with your husband? I am with my who husband. Who is your teacher? Who well, your no, teacher? this was this is kind of an interesting story. Okay. Yeah. He was my high school drama teacher. Okay. And we got engaged when I graduated. And I went to Boston University and he went to Memphis to get his master's and we decided yes. that I would move to Memphis. So I moved to Memphis mm. and I went, oh my God, I'm in Memphis and I'm getting married. And I was not ready. I was 17 or 18 at sure. the time. So I left and I moved to New York. How? And what kind of left? <laughs> I left him you in just, Memphis. Did you like just go running away? I like, went ah. running. I went running and... Uh, we didn't talk for 35 years, and then I was going to go back to Miami to help take care of my parents for a couple of years right. and asked if anybody knew someone who taught at the University of Miami because I wanted to teach there. And they said, well, it's a small world, but Bill Routabush is teaching there. And I said, well, 35 years, I will write that email. It's been a long <laughs> time. And would you introduce me to the head of the theater department? I'd love to have dinner. And when I, we, he said yes to both. When I walked outside the door for him to pick me up for dinner, I turned and I looked at him and I was like, that's who I'm supposed to be with. That's it. Oh, you knew? I knew. And that was it. We were married probably six months later, or eight months later. Wow. So was it, was it kind of like you never, like, you know, it's just... No, life went on for me. You know, I yeah. got married. I have a child who's 33 and on Broadway. Yes. And um, I just, I had a full life, right. you know. And yeah. it's just really interesting that the person who I want to start my life with is the person I'm going to end my life with, yeah. you know. So it's That's it's great. really great. Yeah. So you started in Florida. Yes. Miami. Miami. Yes. How's the Miami? Miami is cool. Yeah. Miami, I was just there. I mean, Miami is hopping and happening and fun, and the beach is gorgeous. The it's water consistent. Is it's not like up and down. Miami is Miami. Miami's Miami. The drivers suck. <laughs> but other than that, it's a great place. Yeah. Yeah. My experience with Florida is generally Orlando. Uh huh. Sorry. Do you go to Disney World? Is that where you go? <laughs> well, so we have uh, clients here like Universal Studios and Disney uh -huh, uh -huh, and stuff like uh -huh. that. So we go over there. Um, we're an organized labor mm -hmm. uh, company, right? Teamsters. And so we'll have conventions out there sometimes. Um, and so, yeah, unfortunately, I only get to see like Orlando every time. And what is Orlando like? Well, not really is there's not happening like Miami no right? it's sparse there's like yeah. driving in between there's a bunch of trees and hot and it's not really all that exciting so I need to go to Miami it sounds like oh my god it's great right it is great restaurants really interesting you know people it's a destination it sounds so, further south yeah it's much it's about six hours further south okay yeah so hotter more tropical oh my god so hot because Orlando is already hot like so right? oh Miami is hell it is hell on <laughs> earth in in terms of like the weather you just can't believe it's that hot mm. 
but my parents grew up there and they loved it and so we grew up there how far is that from key west or is key west all the way down there key west is all the way down um i couldn't tell you how long it would take to get there because i've only been there a few times and, I, and I, it was in my youth and god i've done way too many things to remember right <laughs> <laughs> i think i was there <laughs> yeah i think right maybe yeah so miami is um multicultural it is and so what's your back can i ask about your cultural background sure i'm yeah. jewish yes. russian you know eastern european okay jewish yes and uh that's my cultural background yeah that's great um so there's a lot of um puerto ricans right uh, of all the people no there's in cubans cubans yes. puerto rican would be new york yes. right? yes sorry dominicans in new york right so cubans yeah, a lot, a lot. And the of news right now. It's great. I mean, they really brought up culture and great food, great yes. dining, you know, stuff like that. They they're really a great addition to Florida. Right. How do you feel about like diversity and having inclusiveness, and does it add to the soup that is America, or do we need it more pure? No, I don't think we need it more pure. I set you up on that. that yeah, was easy you did. One. That was a good one. No, we don't need it more pure. I love diversity, uh, inclusion. Um, absolutely, I believe. You know what the Statue of Liberty said, which is, you know, give us your tired and your poor, and I believe that. Sure, the huddled masses yearning come to on be down. free. Yes. Yeah, that's great. Look at. So here, look, the rest of the gang, come on in. Hey. We are recording live, but we are talking now about Flor Miami, Florida, mm -hmm. and diversity. Uh, so when you were younger, you, you grew up there, and then how did your dad was a lawyer? My dad was a lawyer, and he became a federal judge. Ooh. And so that's what he did for 25 years. He just passed away about six weeks ago. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Thank you. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so how did that translate to acting you know I have no idea where I got the acting bug or who I got it from um, one day I heard a recording that my father said listen to this and it was someone singing and I thought it was Frank Sinatra and it was him and I was shocked I was like my god you've got this gorgeous voice I've never heard this before yeah. and I started out as musical theater actress okay and I started out in a uh, in Miami at the Coconut Grove Playhouse, which mm -hmm. became Player State Theater. I was one of the youngest members of their company. And uh, that's how I started, was was in theater. What, uh, did you do any big plays like everyone would know? Um, Cyrano de Bergerac was mm -hmm. one of them. Uh, I can't remember, I can't remember the other ones I did. I can't, it's, yeah. it's off the top well, of my head, right. I can't remember. I love theater. I mean, it's such a great experience. We talk about it because on our show, on Talk Talk with Philly G, mm -hmm. right? We yeah. have theatrical actors. We have musicians. Yeah. We have, I mean, you could have commercial actors, models, like so many different things. I think theatrical acting has like a special place in the entertainment realm where I said this before, it gets kind of like a, a weird rap because people are like, I'm going back to the theater to kind of get my chops up or something like that. Like it's something you go True. back to and it's like what come on now. or you stay with it or you right. you know but a lot of people do go back to it it's there's something about doing something in front of a live audience yes. you get that immediate response yes. you know it helps your timing with what you're with what you're doing on stage it's uh the camaraderie of the people that you're working with um there's something really great about theater yeah but it's not the end all you know, of everything. There's film and television that I love as well. Which, you know? yeah, so you transitioned, of course. Yes, right? yes and how I did. So you went um, from, I guess, smaller roles in Miami mm -hmm. in theater. Mm -hmm. And then what happened? And then I moved to New York and I fell into, I went with a modeling agency and within, and it was a top modeling agency. And within the modeling agency, they had a theatrical department and that's what I was interested in. So I went with the agent there and I sort of fell into great situations, you know. What was, may I ask what the agency was? Uh, Zoli. Zoli. Zoli Modeling Agency, okay. which is no longer because he died. But um, I fell into great, like a friend of mine would say, hey, I'm going to audition for uh, 
ordinary people. You want to come with me? And I was like, absolutely, I'm coming with you. And we went to Robert Redford's offices and, you know, auditioned. And I got a call back for it. And I had to read for him, which was so freaky and so scary. And his office was like What year would this have been? This This was in probably 19... 79 or 80 yeah 1980 this is probably when bob if we may is was like that's good looking right yes <laughs> he was like at his most powerful he was yeah he was great so i walked into the room where he was and there was like a painting on the side and there was him all the way down in front in a desk and i felt like it took forever it to like walk motion. down to him and i went down and i i there was a golden light from a window shining on him and he looked like an angel i did the worst reading i ever did in my life right yeah but it was like it was really something i was 19 at the time and did he give you any feedback or he was just like thanks for coming it was a thanks for coming yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) (laughs) it wasn't any great feedback it was just thank you very much yeah shake of the hand yeah 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 well that's that's a great experience it was really cool for the books yeah and so then you kept on auditioning for other... I kept auditioning. And I auditioned for Greece, and I was called back for that on Broadway, but I didn't get that, and that was my oh, that would have been first Which... actual audition for... for Sandy, believe it wow. or not. Wow. I thought I was a Rizzo, but no, I was a Sandy. That would have been awesome. Yeah, it would have been really awesome, Yeah, but uh, didn't get didn't it. Quite work and quite um, I just sort of went into auditioning and testing. I tested a lot, yeah. a lot. And I ended up getting a soap called Texas, hmm. and that was my first television thing. Right, and it was, uh, you know, it was incredible. It was like getting a paycheck, that was amazing, yeah. and doing this work with these great people, and being there every day, and being a part of something. It was, it was a really good first experience. And that's hard working. It is soap opera work is so difficult. Yeah, it's it is. You know, people think it's no big deal, but you do an episode <laughs> a day, yeah. whereas when you're doing nighttime television, it's seven or eight days to do one episode. So right. it's an episode a day. And you have like 30 to 40 pages of dialogue to learn. Yeah. And that's really hard. And I used to set my days up so that I would learn just the next days, but familiar with the day after. And then that day would end and then I would get more familiar with that one and learn the other one. It was a it was a process. And you become a soap pro, if you will, right? A soap pro. Uh, so your your memory muscle is flexed constantly. Absolutely. I had no problem like just looking at something for a few minutes and it was done. Yeah. Those were the days. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then so you moved from Texas to? Uh, after Texas, I moved the show to Texas. Los Angeles. Yeah. And I did a bunch of pilots. Yeah. Uh, I did a mo- movies of the week, and then I got North and South, which was a real game changer for me. It was a game changer for America. It was. <laughs> that it was, it was an incredible miniseries. Yes, right, Ed. You remember North and South? Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, Patrick Swayze, right? Yes. You were his sister. I was his sister. And who are? Tell us some more of the act. I mean, it was oh my an incredible god, there was cast. Hal Holbrook, yes. uh, Linda Evans, yes. um, Elizabeth Taylor, Gene Kelly, Jimmy Amazing. Stewart. I met Jimmy Stewart. The meeting of Jimmy Stewart yeah. was, it was the first day when we were doing part two, and he had a scene with Patrick Swayze, and nobody was called except for Patrick and Jimmy, but everybody in the cast showed up, mm-hmm. and we stood behind the camera and watched Jimmy do his stuff, which he knew all of his lines, and he did his tripping over lines and the way he talked, you know, and he came up to everyone, and he shook our hands and said how, what a pleasure it was to meet us. And I just thought, what a classy man. Yeah, right, that's how it's supposed to be. I, he's just my favorite. Yeah, and that, I mean, so that was an incredible experience. It was incredible. And it's still long, so tell us more. I mean, it's not done. It's not done, I have, uh, daily on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, people writing about North and South, writing about my character and how much my character meant to them and that they named their child you know, after my character. And my character was not a nice character. Oh. So I'm thinking, <laughs> why did you name your child after this incredible bitchy woman? <laughs> right? 
I have no idea why. So you're from the South, right? Mm -hmm. Florida's the mm -hmm. South, but that was like a different South. That was a totally different South. Is that it was, Georgia? We shot in Natchez, Mississippi, in Mississippi. Charleston, South Carolina, okay. and a couple of other places for remotes. But um, the Charleston was my favorite. Charleston was an incredible place to be. Yeah. Yeah, and and we shot about six months there. Right. And we shot out of uh, I can't remember suddenly the incredible place that we shot at that was our main home um i'll think of it in a minute i'm sure <laughs> right. um but gene simmons was my mother hmm. and she i mean you know gene simmons yeah. she's done a zillion things it was like incredible to have her as my mother and kirstie alley was in it of course yeah. and um it was just it was so people still contact Amazing. me a lot yeah. a lot if i post a picture for you know flashback friday or whatever they do yeah. the amount of how much you've mean to me and what you've done with that character just yes. you know really really comes out right so i mean Ed, this is a studio insider show right i mean we're for working professionals and we really want to learn your experiences right Talk a, well first. I want to hear Patrick Swayze's story, right? Mm -hmm. But talk a little bit. I mean, the show was incredible because it was an incredible ensemble. Yeah, it was. the writing was amazing. I mean, the location. You had a location scout. They found the great place. I mean, just ever the whole crew, right? Can you talk a, a little bit about that as a working actress? How did the whole environment lend itself to you giving your best performance? Yeah, the the environment definitely in every situation when you're working, the environment really means a lot. And to be in the South, to be there, to to actually be um, in Charleston, where you know on Fort Sumter they first fired into the battery, mm. to have that kind of history when you're working on that history, is incredible. Yeah. Um, you know, you do your research, and uh, you just you just go and do it. And everyone around you is Southern, and we we had someone teach us our accents so that they were accurate because at the time around the Civil War, each regionalism was different, sure. such as uh, Charleston or uh, no, Natchez had an accent that sounded like Canadian, where they would say about and out and house. Yeah. And it was just, it sounded so weird when we would hear it on television, but that's how they spoke at that time. Sure. Do you remember any lines? Can you do like a line or two? Oh, I'm putting gosh. you on the spot, sorry. <laughs> Is this okay? I, you know, Cheryl I says it's even, okay. Cheryl says it's okay. Well, Cheryl says, Cheryl, do you remember any of the lines? Um, I can't think of any oh, right okay. off the top I will, of my I'll head. take I'm the so pressure sorry. off. No, it's all right. Um, how about the accent? You, you don't have to do the accent, but I mean, that's a, that was, as a working actress, right? Actor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that are required of you, aren't there? Learning an accent. Learning an accent. And I did everything phonetically way. on my script. Your and I look, still have the, way the you script. Look. The look was authentic. They tried for everything authentic. So there was the corset, the petticoats, the hoop skirts, sure. the petticoats over that. There was a lot of weight in those clothes. Yeah. And we shot during the summer, which was really hot. Here's a funny story. There okay. were these little bugs that were called no seams that are in the South. Okay. And they loved our hairspray. And so we would do a take, and then we, would, we had in our boots a long rat tail comb. And as soon as they'd say cut, everyone would grab their comb and start stabbing their <laughs> wigs, stabbing them, and then they'd say, okay, action. <laughs> and you go right back to doing what you were doing. But they, they bit and they really oh, hurt man. your head. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, so, so there was costumes. There's location, there's yeah. learning your lines, yeah. there's there's getting chemistry with the people that you're working with. Sure. And that actually came really easily. Yeah. We all we did a reading of the whole thing first before we ever shot anything. And people just gravitated towards each other. And we knew that we were in for something really big, but yeah. we didn't know that it would be as big and as meaningful as it really was. Am I was. right that it was ABC? It was ABC. Yes. You are good. I'm good. Well, I, I mean, I, I was really impressed. I was impressionable at the time, but mm -hmm. I mean, I just, I love the genre, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's like our royalty. If we had royalty, that would have been it at that time, you know? Um, but please tell us, give us a 
taste of Patrick Swayze? Well, I can tell you that he he um, he taught me how to dirty dance before he did the movie. Okay. And what we would do was we would all go out for dinner together, and we'd have a huge dinner with lots of cocktails. We were big on the cocktails. Yes. And we would go dancing after until 2 or 3 in the morning to get the alcohol out of our systems. So Patrick taught me, he, he showed me how to dirty dance. Yes. And we just had a blast. It was just a blast. Yes. And, and then we'd have to get up at 4.30 or 5 and go to work. Right. Uh, he was a, a very generous actor, wouldn't you say? He was. He was always about what would make something better what mm. would make the scene better right. what you know he would talk to me about my character although it was his choices for my character and not mine but we would discuss them you know and uh he was he was a very generous very giving man he was incredibly kind we had a lot of fun we just had fun it was all about fun and i think it, it really came through that's why people really related to it right um and yes we could talk about North and South all day. We're not going to, though. Let's move on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right? So um, you, General Hospital. Dynasty right? was the next well, thing that I did. Okay. Go ahead. I went after, uh, I was pregnant with my daughter when North and South aired. And when it was finished, and then I had my daughter, I said, you know what? F find out if Dynasty would be interested in having me on. Yeah. And they absolutely said yes mm. and wrote a part. And I started on Dynasty. So on the heels of North and South, yes, they said, okay, of course we'd like you. Yeah. So yeah. I was very fortunate to have that yeah. situation. And you knew Linda, right? Did Well, I didn't work with her. She was there, but I didn't work with so her. So she didn't vouch for you or anything? No, no. No? No. Oh. Nobody vouched. Didn't, it, was it wasn't just, required. They, they didn't need to it at wasn't that required. point. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. was very lucky. Yeah. That's great. And so how long was your run on Dynasty? Two years. And then I decided that it was time to move on. It was, it was a sticky situation because the people who were the original OGs on there uh, were paid special attention to. Mm. And when you were newer, you were not. And I was so young that it annoyed me, really annoyed me. So mm. I moved on from Dynasty. Yeah, you couldn't just let that pass. No, it was... There were difficult times, some yeah. difficult times. I get it. Mm -hmm. So you moved on and you went to? Uh, after Dynasty, I think I went to either Santa Barbara or General Hospital. Yeah. I mean, I did Quantum That's Leap, not... which was one of oh, my love favorite show. shows. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Scott, Scott was oh, come phenomenal. Come and I got to kiss him a lot in the show. <laughs> so it was really fun. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm... Mr. Baculum, right? I Mr. Say, Bacula, he, yeah. Yes, Bacula. He Bacula. was terrific. He was just great. He called me at the end of that season yeah. and out of the blue and said, you know, I think you should put yourself in for an Emmy Award. And I was just so touched yeah. that someone would take the time to do that. Someone who was as busy as he was, yes. was to call me up and to say that. And that was really, I was just shocked. That was so nice. Yes. I had that happen twice. Gary Cole with Midnight Caller also mm -hmm. called me at the end of the season mm. and said, I think you need to put yourself in for an Emmy. It's quite an honor. It was quite yeah. an honor. You've been very lucky. You've had uh, quite a nice career of working with like some of the best. Some great people. Right? Yeah, absolutely the best. I've been so, so fortunate. I'm so filled with gratitude for it. Yes. Charmed life. Yeah. General Hospital, were you pre or post Luke and Laura? I was post Luke and Laura. I was. <laughs> Thank you for laughing. Tony Geary decided that he wanted to play a character called Bill, which was Luke's uncle. Okay. And he was a very dark and nasty character. Yeah. And. Because they were on the run. They were, they were on the run, but this was way after. This was oh. like 1994 okay. or something. Oh, okay. And so my character came in as a blind woman. Mm. 
who he takes to General Hospital to get her eyesight back. <laughs> and they did, they actually did the reveal with like the gauze in front uh, of the thing. And you see a little bit more light and a little bit more light. And then you actually see, you know. Yeah, so it's, it's blurry. It and was then... so funny. And then I blink and then I can see again. And it was miraculous. And I didn't need my cane. Whoops. Didn't need my cane okay. anymore. And off it went. Um, and that was about a year uh, they decided they didn't like this character, Bill. And my character was really wonderful. Right. Her name was Victoria, and yes. she was terrific. And uh, so they didn't like the character, Bill. And so I went on to do North and South 3 wow, after yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, look, it just goes and goes and it goes. Just, it, it just didn't stop. There was yes. a, It was a great, great time. Amazing. So as the world turns, right? Right, that as was... the world turns. That was... That was in the last bit of, that was like up to 2010. Yeah. So it was about five years on sure. and off in a great yeah. character that I loved. She yeah. was an alcoholic con artist. Mm -hmm. And those are my favorite kinds of things to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get to be so, it, it allows you a lot of room to work, a to bring your own interpretation you know, into when the you're, role. When you're not playing the good girl, yeah. You have every which way you can go. Yes. There are no, nothing stops you, mm. you know, and that, that's what I love. I love that challenge of picking and choosing how I want the character to be. Yeah. Now I'm going to ask you if you have like a, uh, an acting method. Did you, you know, I do, I ahead. do the Sandy Meisner technique Okay. and, uh, it's, and I also do Lee Strasberg. So there's a yes. little bit of Lee in there and there's yes. a lot of Sandy in there. And uh, how would you describe that, the Sandy is it The Sandy method, what I use mostly is, uh, it's called nursery rhymes. Okay. And what you do is, in, in the process, you actually do, like, you make up a scene, and instead of saying words, you say a nursery rhyme over and over and over again. And so that gets you clarity as to what the scene is about, what the intentions are, what uh, what the other actors' intentions are, listening to what they're moving and how their faces are. And, and uh, I use it in my scenes because I'll just do a nursery rhyme instead of the words for the scene so that I get clearer yeah. as to what my intentions are. Sure. I think it's it's an interesting like focal point when you're looking at your script and you're like, okay, I'm trying to figure out what this character. And then we just talked about Patrick Swayze. And not only did he know his character, he knew everybody's character. He mm -hmm. knew everything. Mm -hmm. And he just, he, so do you find yourself like sometimes in, in that where you can like look and see like the bigger picture, you know, rather than, you know, the bigger being, picture in terms of, of like what's going on with, with a scene. Right. So, yeah. So, I don't want to sound you are um, seasoned you have mm -hmm. been around um, you've been acting a lot longer probably than um, other people that mm -hmm. you're working with and so you could help them along you know. I never ever offer it's not that I don't offer help it's not my place to mm. discuss with someone what their character is that's mm. their choice right all that I hope for is that they listen to me when I'm doing my lines and react and that's what I do for them. I listen to them and react. Yeah. And then the words come out. Right, right, right. I get that. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about, so in the industry, things are changing. Yes, they are. Right. Back mm -hmm. in the day, you saw Robert Redford and Golden Bob in his chair. Yeah. Right, if that's an accurate portrayal. Yeah, absolutely. But today you wouldn't see Golden Bob in his chair, would you? No, today it's, it's very different. It's, you know, a lot of social media and a lot of self tape. Mm. So what you that means is that you go somewhere or you have capability yourself of taping a scene yourself and sending it in to the cast. Where might director. you go for a place like that? Like Argentum Studios, perhaps? Argentum Studios, I believe. Uh, we are here at Argentum yes. Studios in Studio A. In Studio A, right that's where me. you can do a right self tape me right me back there. Sorry, go ahead. Um, so you self tape and you send it into the casting director and that, you know, for them, it's easier for us. It's harder because 
you feed off of what's in the room. Mm. You get an energy for what's in the room. Yeah. You know, you can get feedback from a director when you're in the room or the producer or someone, the casting director. Yes. The casting director is usually sitting there reading, so yeah. she's not giving any notes or anything. Um, so I miss that yeah. tremendously because it really, really helps you, I feel. I agree. And without being self-promoting anymore, I was joking, not joking before, um, but we have a gal. Well, we have... Paul, who's here, and he reads with everyone, and Becca, she reads as well. Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of what we offer is, and I'm not doing a self-promo right now, I'm being honest about being able to vibe and being able to you know, have someone that you could have an energy with so that you can make your best self-tape. Yeah. Um, you know, it is kind of so clinical, right? And it's it hard to get your spirit up and get into that moment. So, you know, we feel that that's really, wouldn't you agree, Paul? Could we do a door yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. So um, there we are. Um, also, it's pilot season. Yes. I mean, so the grind, the constant trying to audition. Mm -hmm. um, and the pilot season for you, I mean, for everyone generally is the beginning of the year, right? Right. February to. To like April. April, yeah, and then May they usually make the decisions as to what the network is going to play. It's called the upfronts, what they're going to yeah. put on for the fall. Mm. And so you go out and you do yourself tapes. And how, how do you find roles? Do you you have? Of I course, have a Cheryl. manager and an agent, right? Cheryl Jackson, who are not the same, Lita, or is Littman, she the two same? Different. No, I have two different. I have an agent, yes. which is Litman Talent Group, and then okay. I have Jackson Entertainment Management. Yes. She should be called Super Cheryl. Super Cheryl. That's right? a good Everyone one. Everyone that I speak to, they always say she's so awesome. And you sing her praises as well. Absolutely. And so you really need to align yourself with a management company, a great agent um, for people who are coming up. That's that's a tough thing to get. Mm. Is I don't know how they do it now to get an agent, but there used to be you know, classes where you put on scenes and agents would come to the scenes and they would see them. And if they saw someone that they thought, they thought was interesting, they would call them in and meet with them. Um, I'm not sure. Is it the same way now, Cheryl? No, it's yeah. not. They can't really do that anymore. Yeah. So much. Uh -huh. There's a lot of rules about it. Okay. Yeah, there are a lot of rules uh, we hear about doing things like that. But I mean, I guess there's other ways you, get your, you can get yourself noticed, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a catch-22. It's, you know, get yourself noticed in something, yeah. in a play or something like that. Yeah. And how and do you get then, the play exactly. without an agent? The chicken so, or the egg, Yes, right? exactly. Well, I think um, with technology, and I will just say we're going to go a little bit over on this because we don't get Terry very often. In fact, <laughs> never you. before. So thank you. If you don't mind sticking around a little bit Not more. Not at all. Um, yeah, I, I think there's... Uh, with technology and YouTube and mm -hmm. Instagram and like all the social media, there's a lot of opportunities to be creative. And I don't think it's, there are rules, but there aren't rules, right? You can go out of the box yes. if you're able to Definitely. and really do something creative and get yourself noticed that way. If you, you know, write your own content mm. and perform that and get that on YouTube and get yeah. that out there somehow or another, get it to go viral if you can, yeah. you know, that's, that's a great way. Yeah. I mean, well, so you said there's a group of people who follow the North and South. Yes. Um, you know, the whole. Reenactors, yeah. people. I mean, the reenactors are incredible. So if you were really an aficionado, mm -hmm. you could start your own podcast about North and South. And you could be like the aficionado and you could just, I mean, you could, right? Uh, Absolutely. You could be you a could Star Trekkie. You could be a Trekkie and do it. I mean, there's so many things. There's no rules. It's just. Exactly. Just find whatever's important and sincere to you. And then share it with everyone when you right, say that. Right. Yeah. Time. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, how did you start your show? They made what me. Was it? They made you. <laughs> they twisted your arm. <laughs> we started. Um, I won't go into. Uh, so we have a lot of people who come into our doors, uh -huh. and I'm so grateful and thankful that people come to our gym, gym and A and I. Uh, we have a t photography mm -hmm. studio here. And I look and I go, well, Ted, he's such an amazing photographer, right? Everybody who comes in, there's so many people, right? Rome and. Uh, I could right. go on and on. How do we get everybody to know this, right? How do we get everyone to know what's going on here? Because I think it's so special. And I'm like, well, let's do a podcast. You know? Yeah, yeah. I call it a net show. I like that yeah, net yeah. show. That's that's great. 
<laughs> so you coined that phrase, <laughs> right, did you? That, yes. Um, and so, like I said at the beginning, we bring you in and uh -huh. we want to share your talents mm -hmm. and we want to learn from your experiences. And then there's just, uh, there's a plethora, a large pool of people to learn from mm -hmm. and to share their experiences mm -hmm. with. And I'm really grateful. I'm grateful to meet you today. Oh, thank you I mean, so we've much. never met each other, but I feel like a kinship. Like I'm, Absolutely. I'm, yeah, it's, it's wonderful. And I wish we had like two hours to go into like so many stories. Um, but I think actors who are young and coming in and, and grinding it out and trying to get roles and auditions and figure things out, I think it's really helpful to learn from your experiences. You've, I mean, we've said that you've had a little bit of a charmed career yeah. because you've been able to skip from nice role to nice uh, role. Yeah, I was lucky. I was very lucky. But I think people aren't lucky. I don't think so. I think you put yourself in a good situation. You were um, very polite with people. You you vibed with people well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You prepared yourself well for your roles. Mm-hmm. You took your acting seriously. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, I mean, when you get on North and South, it's a great role. But if you didn't do your job well, you wouldn't have performed well. And the next dot wouldn't have come. Right. Absolutely. So that's what you I have would say. To, you have to do your work. Mm. You have to know what you're doing. You've got to know a character. You've got to listen to the other person who you're in a scene with. You know, you definitely have to do your work. Right. Acting is a profession. Exactly. <laughs> it's not and it's not easy. You know, it's not, it's not the easiest thing. Yeah. And, and like we talked about, not only are you acting, but there's a whole crew, there's a director, there's writers and there's it's it's really an environment that you have to embrace and that you have to enjoy. Yes. Right. Yes. And be prepared. Be be prepared. Absolutely. For sure. Right. Yeah. You have to be prepared yeah. for anything. So where can people see you? Like if all our friends out there, right? Mm -hmm. In TV land? Net YouTube. Land? I think yes. there are a lot of stuff on YouTube mm -hmm. from various shows. Yes. So I, you can find me on there. Yeah. And well, you're currently auditioning for new roles. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of auditions, a lot of lunches and dinners and meetings okay. and things I'm like cross that. My I'm, Thank uh, you. Look, I'm double crossing my fingers. I love that. Yeah. Thank you. So am I, mean, I, I and my every, toes. Yes. I want everyone to be so successful. I mean, we should all reach our potential. We should all be so lucky, right? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. But to I think, do what you love mm. and to be happy with what you do. That's everything. So many people are not happy with what their job is, what their right. work is. It's yeah. just going, showing up, you know, to love what you do. I was so lucky for that. Yeah. And I think it resonates when you go into an audition. I mean, people can really feel that, number one, they need to know you're serious and that you're going to take your job seriously, right? Mm -hmm. And number two, the role that we're asking you to, you know, to audition for, you're able to meet what requirements we're looking for right right whatever they're looking for or right whatever so i think there's two components to acting right number one you're professional you're mm -hmm. going to show up and you're actually going to do it and take chances mm -hmm. with your auditions oh, okay like what you know to i remember my north and south audition mm. i just threw caution to the wind and had this scene where i had to show someone strawberries and i stuck them on my boobs and I said, look, they're ripe, you know, and they were just like, who is this girl? <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I like that, right? Yeah. Well, you just do different things. Just and we were speaking choices. with our friend Paul and he was saying, you know, on one edition, he got a lot of great feelings because he just went in and he was just himself. And mm -hmm. that was a, a really um, effective way. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't contrived. It was like, it's me. Right. right. I love that. That's great. Yeah. I think that um, that honesty and that sincerity, a lot of directors, right? Casting agents are like, okay, I know what I'm dealing Something with. Something different. Yeah, right? absolutely. Well, we, we don't want an unknown quantity. Right. We want to know what we're getting. Right. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think surprises are really good too. Well, on a professional level. Yes. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. Surprise us with your abilities. With the character, with your ability, yes. with making choices. You want to stay with the choices that the, that are right for the character. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I mean, did we miss anything? Have we have we covered I a think lot? We covered. Uh, yeah. I also one other thing I yes. wanted to mention was I I have a company with my sister called Sisters Alchemy, and okay. we make all natural, chemical free soap. Tell them. Look, tell them. Tell tell the camera people. <laughs> tell them out there. So look here. Here's, okay, look, here's so the camera. Okay, so it's called 
sistersalchemy.com. Yeah. You go there. We have a bunch of soap that's all natural, no chemicals, great ingredients like like uh, cocoa butter and shea butter and coconut oil and olive oil and the scents. I, I, whoops, I usually develop the scents because um, I just have a nose for it for yeah. whatever reason. And um, they're really interesting scents in the soaps and that's our company. And where can we find it? Go online to sistersalchemy.com. Sisters Alchemy is one word. Okay. That's great. I recommend, look at me, here I am. I recommend everybody go right now to Sisters Alchemy and you can find the a scented bunch of products, stuff. right? Mm -hmm. So products, buy a lot, buy often. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, support the cause. We're all about supporting the cause, right? Absolutely. In every, in, in every sense, support the cause. Thank you very much. We are so thankful. We have said a lot today. We did. And we have learned a lot. And I'm so proud and happy that you came to visit us Thank today. You. We're all better people. You guys out there, me here are better people for having you oh, have come into you. our studio today. And I really thank you a lot. My pleasure. This was Yay, really thank fun. You. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Terry okay. Garber. And that's our show for today. We will see you next time. This is Talk Talk with Philly G. I'm Philly G. See you next time. <laughs>